greatest single cause of atheism in the world today is Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips and walk out the door and deny him by their lifestyle. That is what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable. Welcome back to Winds of Change. I'm your host and Bible teacher, Keith McKenzie. Uh, we're in Genesis chapter 3. I think we might have done verse 1 uh, last show, introducing the, uh, the serpent. So I think we uh, covered that pretty good. By no means exhaustive in uh, our attempt to talk about angiology. Uh, you know, entire uh, volumes are uh, dedicated to some of these things that we're just going to introduce. Uh, but it's just very important that we do that. Let's go ahead and start this session off with uh, prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, that um, you've given us your word. Your word is a lamp under our feet. It helps us not to stumble. And we need your word. We need the illumination by your Holy Spirit. Give us eyes and ears to both see and hear what your word has to say to us today. Bless us and help us to be able to worship you in spirit and truth because that's what you desire and we want to fulfill the desires of your heart in Jesus mighty name amen all right so let's go ahead got your Bibles Genesis chapter 3 I think we're gonna cover verse 2 right now but some of these things will will pick up some speed as we go through here but it's gonna take a little while because we have a lot of very important topics as we discussed last week on you know, being introduced here in uh, this chapter. So let's just go ahead and, and reread the first couple of, of verses and then we'll touch on that. And it says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of the tree of the garden. So Satan introduces, the serpent introduces that doubt. Now right here, what we wanna look at in verse two, it says, and the woman said to the serpent, says, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Okay, that's true. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat. Now notice here, it says there's a little comma and it says, nor shall you touch it lest you die. God didn't say that. This was, this is already here. We, we're just into the, you know, very first part here of, um, you know, Genesis chapter three. And we already have, you know, we have the creation, right? Uh, God gives some commands, be fruitful and multiply. Um, tells Adam, you know, not to eat of the tree that's in the midst of the garden. And so if we look in um, uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, if we back up just a little bit, and, and it says, and the Lord God commanded, okay, it was a command, saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. That's it. That's all he said. You shall not eat. And it says, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. That's Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. But Eve says, we're not, she adds, nor shall you touch it lest you die. That's religion. Religion is always adding things to God's word. God's word actually closes out um, in Revelation chapter 22, verse 18, uh, it says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add to these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So, you know, we already find that man is adding. So th this is where legalism if you've ever heard of the term, comes in. It's where um, good people, good, you know, they think they're doing good, but what they do is, is they know that this is sin, okay? And then they say, okay, we're not supposed to, you know, eat this. And so what they do is they, they put up a fence because they don't want you to eat it. Then they put up another fence, which God didn't put, 
you know, with legalism, and then they say, no, you're not even supposed to touch it. No, you know what? Um, smoking cigarettes is a sin. Wearing your hair long is a sin. Um, you know, if you don't wear the right color hosiery in certain places, these, they, they keep adding all these things. And that was the problem of the Pharisees during Jesus' day because they had put tradition, man-made tradition, on par and even above the Word of God. That is legalism. That is what Jesus called bondage. It said they add to you these things, burdens, heavy to carry, because we weren't meant to do that. God, you know, and I love it, it says, you know, he came to set the captives free. And that was Jesus' mandate when he was quoting from uh, Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 61. He says, I come to set the the captives free. It was, it was a jubilee. He was, you know, telling people that they were putting uh, legalistic things that aren't found in the Word of God, right? They put those fences up and they were adding to the Word of God. So that's another reason why we need to read the Bible and find out what it's there for, right? So let's go ahead and, and keep keep going. So you know, we surmise here, or at least I do, is that Adam, you know, didn't want her to do that, so he, he started setting up that, that, that fence ar around that tree because touching it wasn't the sin. Obviously, it was probably, you know, a little more drawn in. But um, verse 4 says, Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. So that's just, bah outright lie. God just said in Genesis 2, 17, that in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. And now here, the serpent says, you will not surely die. So again, he impugns the character of God. We can see why he's in a lot of trouble, right? And so he lies. So there, he, he's, you know, the scriptures call him the father of lies, you know, Satan, you know, <laughs> I've seen some cartoons where, uh, you know, Jesus is uh, speaking and, and uh, you know, Satan's sitting there all, you know, kind of frumpy and stuff. And, uh, you know, Satan says something like, well, how do you know I'm lying? And Jesus says, well, your lips are moving, you know, and that's, you know, the kind of the thing. But I tell you what, the most effective lie, right, has a little bit of truth mixed into it. And you'll hear from me, um, rat poison is 99.9% nutritious. It's a very, very small part that is poisonous to rats, which probably just means that rats are a little more discerning than people because there's some, uh, you know, new age philosophies and all kinds of other uh, nonsense that's out there that does have, they, it has a hook, right? And it's baited, right? But it's death, spiritual death. There's just enough there to get hooked, right? And then psh, they get them. So that's the way Satan works. Verse 5, for God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. <laughs> that's, that's the lie of the New Age. Mormons believe that they will become gods. They will become their own Messiah if you follow their plan, okay? And then you get your own universe, and then you can die for your own planet. It's a really uh, kind of neat uh, plan, but, it, but it's a lie. And um, New Age, the heart of of uh, if you want to just take a pot and because there's so many different uh, new age philosophies out there if you just boil it all away and you look in the bottom of the pan basically what they have is you can be like God that is the lie right here being introduced and because um, Satan wants to be like God and so that's the lie that he introduced there in verse 5 